I definitely see a trajectory in evolution. I see that trajectory as an ever-repeating maturation cycle, where some unity individuates, such as, for example, the early Earth's crust, which was a homogeneous mass of minerals, differentiated itself, individuated itself into bacteria, literally packaging life in, in little separate bits. And whenever in this cycle you have individuation, you always get tension and conflict resulting among the individuals. Now they can either bump each other off at that stage of things because a lot of hostile, aggressive kind of competitive behavior can happen, or they can do something else to survive. And that is to start looking at some of those conflicts and figuring out, negotiating ways of resolving them. And the better they get at resolving tensions and conflicts, the more cooperative ventures begin to happen. And the more cooperative ventures beginning to happen, you can come to a whole new level of unity. In the case of the bacteria, for instance, the ancient bacteria, after going through uh, very long periods of, of hostile competition and even kind of imperialism where they invaded each other and multiplied within those uh, other kinds of bacteria, eventually they found a way to do a division of labor and instead of each of these colonial ventures dying out when they ate up all the free resources in the other individual, they began to create this division of labor that enabled them to form the nucleated cell, which is the only cell that's ever evolved on this planet after bacterial cells. And each of those different types of ancient bacteria gave up some of their personal, so to speak, DNA to put into this nuclear library of genes. So in more ways than one, this became a very cooperative venture. And then, of course, the cycle goes on where the, um, there are many of these nucleated cells and eventually they form a cooperative unit which we know as a multi-celled creature, the plants, the animals, the things that we see in nature.